Hey Star Wars fans, welcome back to another review. We're looking at Boba Fett's throne room. I did a big unboxing and display video yesterday and I appreciate you all hanging out watching that. That was so much fun to put together and setting up this entire scene. Um, I decided to go ahead and I did say I would do an, an official, official, <laughs> um, actual review of the set and take a good look at all the packaging and everything. So um, obviously, Book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett's throne room comes with the uh, bib fat tuna. We'll take a look at him in a moment. We'll get a look at all the pictures on the box. Some really nice artwork, and it's such a big box. Um, I personally love that this was marketed towards Boba Fett. Um, you know, it keeps it fresh, keeps it up to speed. We all, most of us, I think we're going to use it for Jabba's palace, I think. Perso you know, that's my view. I'll be using it as Java's Palace, um, and I've been able to use my original throne base plus the throne to have a little Boba Fett display, which is really, really cool. So, here's some of the pictures here on the side. So, we have Boba Fett there confronting uh, Bib Fat Tuna. We have Bib there with his throne with the fire pit. We have the throne on its own, which is a really nice piece. Some of the little accessories, and then we have... Boba and Fennec sitting on the throne from Book of Boba Fett. Now they've also depicted the scene from the end of season two of The Mandalorian, where Boba comes in and he sits on the throne, but you know they do sort of hang out there a bit, so it could be either way on the side. Have an awesome image there of Bib Fortuna. He's uh he has a well fed Twi'lek. <laughs> And now on the other side, we have a very nice sort of layout image of everything included. And we're going to take a look at these parts on the bottom. And just spin it around again. Some more sort of highlights of, of the images. I personally love that they had the little Kowaki and monkey lizard there. All the details, you could swap it out. All the bits and pieces. It, it just is so, such a nice set for world building and all that so there is the box it is a big piece i will be keeping the box uh i've got to find somewhere for it <laughs> which will be fun but um yeah on it we'll get a look at uh bib fortuna and then we'll take a look at all the set all right folks here is bib fortuna in in, in brackets there tatooine i really like this card i just love the look of the figure i think it looks so good I'm very, very tempted to open this one up. I will do a in-depth review on the entire figure if I do decide to do that at some point. But for now, I'm just happy to sort of keep him on on the card for the moment. VC276. You know, I thought this would have been cooler if it was a, you know, a non-numbered non -numbered figure for the line. A little bit of a bonus, but... You know, I wonder whether we'll ever see him again in some way, form or another. I have my doubts. I think they were pretty explicit in saying this was going to be exclusive to this set. So, yeah, just taking a look at the figure in there, it's very, very tempting. He looks so good. Great image there of Matthew Wood as Bib Fortuna on the card. He looks fantastic. And I love he comes with that vintage style staff. Some of the other figures were out at about the same time as real of release. So yeah, we'll put this aside and I'm going to start setting up the throne and all the bits and pieces here. So let's take a look. All right, guys, here it is all set up pretty much, you know, as it's depicted on the box and all the box art. Adding in, of course, the Morak version of Boba Fett and um, Fennec Shand here as well um, she has taken a little bit of blue tack on the bottom just to uh sit here sit her nice and cleanly up on the throne and i have used the uh, bottle of spotchka from the set just to sit there but yeah while i've got it all down i'm actually before i start moving it back over to my shelf and displaying it i'm probably going to take some time to um 
you know, use a little bit of blue tack just to keep a few of these little display elements where they need to be. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of small little parts in this set, and it's fantastic. But yeah, there's there's always going to be stuff getting bumped around. So I'm going to take you. No, I'm going to leave you on the tripod here. So obviously the throne here, Jabba's Dias, is on wheels. So we get a few different elements here. We do have, you know, this throne is removable. And I did just have that to stop it from sliding around a little bit. But it didn't really work, so that's all right. If we could take a look at the details of this thing. Obviously crafted by Bib Fortuna, or he paid someone to craft it for him. But I like the, just the, the details, like the... Uh, the sort of the bronze rust, that sort of greeny bronze rust on the Rancor heads there. There is the uh, the sort of cracks down the bottom there. That's that's nice. Nice weathering over the entire thing, like some cracks in the mold. You know, it's meant to be meant to look like that. It's meant to look like it's worn and fat bibs been sitting in it for a little while, getting it all stinky. You can almost sort of see where he's. Butt cheeks have been resting on the on the chair there. <laughs> it's a little bit worn. Reminds me of uh, Homer from The Simpsons making his groove in the couch. So that's cool. Um, either side of that we get some of these little cushions. Little moulded towel blanket sort of things. And they sort of nicely just sort of rest up against the side there. Same with this one. You can kind of see it sort of pushed up on the edge, just the way it's molded, in order to sort of just rest up against there when that's fully back in there. And you have this sort of pot and sort of sit around where that sort of um, blanket and pillows sort of wrap around the base of the pot there. Uh, also on here we do have the little little bowl of fruit, I guess. And no shortage of food and drink here for Mr. Fortuna. There's another pot of something. Again, this little spotchka down there at the corner. There is a little plate of food sitting there. Another, another dish. Some description. There is a little bag of coins. So that's cool, that kind of just sits there in front. You get three of these pelts. Which is really cool. We're going to be getting something similar to these with the uh, Boba Fett throne that's coming in the Vintage Collection this year. So that's nice. And um, I will get around to, if I decide to keep them on the throne here, I will get around to just misting them with a little bit of water just to give them that weight. So they sort of fold down the front of the throne like that. Um... And that will just get them to, as they dry, they'll just sort of sit there. They shouldn't straighten back up. But we'll see. Another little another little pot here. I just love all this little accessories and bits and pieces. Uh, here we have a dish. Had to put all those little bits on individually. Some of them hold better than others. Um, they don't sort of sit in there perfectly. But the inclusion of the droid head is is pretty cool. I don't know what the purpose of it is, but it looks good. <laughs> it's just a random droid head. So that pretty much does it for the throne. Um, get a close look. You can sort of see the gargoyles on the front. The sort of the D rings. You know, I like the weathering in all the cracks. Even like the the bronze rust effect running off of the uh, gargoyles down the front of the throne that's a nice look so get a couple of them on the sides one one on each side but yeah it's just beautiful weathering on this piece so we'll move that aside and i will unhinge this camera so we can take a little fly through 
So I'll just sort of take a look around the actual room, I guess, the the structure. So we have the big archway here, which is really, really nice. Now oh, that's one separate piece. The top here, we've got a couple of the sort of vents. You gotta lock them in. So that's cool. And you get the big the big sort of the back wall there with the archway built in. That's a separate piece. And of course the base with the steps on either side of the throne here is a separate piece too. So it comes down to the little details like this thing. Don't even know the purpose of it, but it's in the movie. It's there. The little elements here on the wall. Got some vents. The vents at the back. You move the uh, rotisserie. So you got some shelves, or a shelf, and like a rack. This little thing up here, you got to put that in yourself. And that's just like a like a square peg almost on the wall. This little horn, little piece, sort of slots into a groove on the bench there. And these four pots, they're all sort of sitting there loosely. We've got another vent here, whether that's for you know air circulation within the um, within the palace. And if you look at some of the old cutaway books. It actually shows the Jabba's palaces quite a ways underground. I'm not sure whether that's sort of depicted that way in the Book of Boba Fett, or whether it's, you know, canonically a thing, <laughs> whether it's deep underground, but it actually takes a little bit to get down to his throne room in the dungeons of the old Bomar Monastery. There are a few other little pieces here, the little, little table thing. Not sure what it's meant to be. You know, vases and pots and here's another another little table with a couple of cups you gotta sort of pop in those holes. But yeah, definitely we'll be trying to blue tack them down just, just to keep them there. There's another one of these that's sort of similar lot to that. Again, not really sure of the purpose whether it's just meant to be little tables. But all just little parts like this underneath the uh, bench there, just the little rods and pipe work. It's just really nice attention to detail. Again, we've got another little bar table there. We've seen these bottles used in the Navarro Cantina before, so that was a little bit of nice reuse. There is another one down here. It's sort of smashed. They use them in the Navarro Cantina as well. So if you wanted to display the bar as it's all shot up, you can do that. Uh, this little table with a couple of little clear cups. I did miss one of those in the unboxing. I did just figure it out recent, just earlier. Um, it didn't come out of the bag. So luckily I didn't throw it out. So I was able to salvage that other cup, but all these little tables are all, you know, adjustable and you can move them around. Let me see if I can spin this around a little bit and get a look through the side here. Yeah, I wonder whether it's sort of like a filtration system for the for the air down there just so it doesn't get super stale. You know, you got a big fat hut living down there. It probably wouldn't smell very nice. So again, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting some camera shots through different angles of this playset. I think it's, um, yeah, just a really cool feat of, I don't know, engineering, I guess. But, you know, you can get the light, get a light shining through the top and emitting like the lights of the, uh, the sort of the roof grids pipe work there and you can get some sort of cool shadows make some make for some cool photo effects and then yeah we've got the uh the rotisserie here which i moved out of the way so you can kind of pull this apart you know this little table will come off that little piece will come off it's another one of those parts um that was actually really 
hard, so I actually glued them on. <laughs> and the flame effect can come off. And sort of just get this heated up. And I've seen people actually put some small lights underneath that, which is super clever. Um, and I do have the perfect little lighting thing to be able to do that. But even just the details on this thing, it's just those little ornate parts on the sides, everything that looks like the rivets, it's all the machinery, the belt that's sort of coming up the side here. The fact that you do have the ability to spin it around. And rotate that around over the flame, which is just so cool. And you do have the ability to actually take that big slab of meat off. Where did he go? And you can exchange it for Kawaki and Monkey Lizard getting roasted. <laughs> you hold on to that and just sort of hang. Hang down and rotate over the fire, which is just... You saw that sort of becoming something of a of a trope in the Mandalorian where you sort of see monkey lizards, you know, being sad, seeing another one getting roasted. But for all for all we know that for all we know they are sort of pests and rodents in Star Wars universe. So yeah, then that tray can go sit back up there. Come back out, we'll slide that throne back in. It's just a remarkable piece um, that I'm seriously just so happy to have this thing in my collection finally. You know, it took me it took me some months to get rid of, get some funds together for this thing. I did actually sacrifice a lot of my vintage Kenner stuff. Um, sold most of my Kenner collection off. It's just, it didn't really have the nostalgia for me like Power of the Force does and my focus sort of being modern, modern Star Wars figures. I decided it was time to uh, move that stuff on and make room for, make room for something like this. Just to build on my modern collection and displays, which is coming along nicely. I love Readjusting. Obviously, there's the throne's going to go in that spot. But yeah, I have done a I have done a room tour recently, so you can check that all out on a separate video. But again, I do appreciate you coming and hanging out and checking out my videos. I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been a really, really fun play set to uh, set up and display and look at Boba Fett taking over but again thank you very much for watching I do appreciate you taking the time to do so I will be back with some more video videos very soon I do have my standard Clone Wars Thursday throwback and Power of the Force Friday episode coming up and then over the next couple of days, so I hope you can tune in for that. But until then, may the Force be with you always. We would be honoured if you would join us.